on and give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give our God a praise this morning. Listen to what the word of God says. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him in the sanctuary. Heaven knows we got a right to praise the Lord in the sanctuary this morning. Amen. It said, praise him in the ferment, amen, of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery, the heart. Praise him with the timbrel, the dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments, the organ. Hallelujah. Praise him up on the hallelujah. Up on the loud cymbals, praise him with the high sounding cymbal and let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. How many of us we got a right to praise the Lord this morning? Come on, let's give God a praise, amen. You know, you'd be in, you, you would be in, you, you would be in debt. You would have gratitude for someone that if they saved your life or saved your family or saved your house from burning down, you'd be so thankful and you'd give them praise and you rave about them while they did. Look what the Lord did for your soul this morning. Amen. He saved us. Hallelujah. Let's one more time give God a shout of praise in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. It sure is good to be here this morning. Amen. Right now, would you raise your hands again towards heaven? That's the blessings of the Lord on this service. Welcome the presence of God. Ask him to speak to our hearts and our lives this morning. Ask him to minister to every heart that would be in this building this morning that God would save and heal and deliver and encourage and strengthen and set free this morning. Father, we thank you. We come before the throne this morning just to honor you for your goodness and your mercies. Oh, God, that we come to have church this morning. We come to worship you this morning. Oh, God, fill this house with your power. Touch us in a mighty, mighty way this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, worship me. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, and nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. Greater. I worship him this and morning. What could separate us now? And what a wonderful name it is. And what a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. And what a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. Oh, yes, and what know, a powerful name it is, and nothing can stand it is. And what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. You didn't want heaven without us. So, Jesus. Your love is greater, and what could separate us now? And what a beautiful name it is! And what a beautiful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ, my King. And what a beautiful name it is! And nothing can stand against. And what a beautiful name it is! Yeah. 
said you have no rival. I said you have no equal. Now and forever, our God reigns. And yours is the kingdom. And yours is the glory. Yours is the day of all. And what a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a powerful name it is. Hallelujah. And nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name. Oh, lift your hands and worship him this morning. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. And what a powerful name it is. And nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name. Oh, we'll sing it again this morning. What a powerful name. What a powerful name it is. And what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Jesus Christ our King. Oh, yes, it is. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. And nothing can stand against. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. Oh, but you see my sins. My sins were great. Your love was greater. And what could sell for greater now? And what a powerful name it is. And what a powerful name it is. And the name of Jesus Christ, my name it is, and what a powerful name it is, at the name of Jesus Christ my King, and what a powerful name it is, and nothing can stand again, and what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, sing it now, what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, and nothing can stand against. What a beautiful name it is, and the name of Jesus. You know what you're singing about this morning? What a beautiful, what a powerful name it is this morning. That name, that name of Jesus that drives away all tears and all fears this morning. What a powerful, powerful name that name of Jesus is. Hallelujah. What a powerful name it is, and the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, and nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name oh, of Jesus. Oh, can't say it again this morning. What a powerful name it is, and what a powerful name it is. Jesus Christ, my King. And what a powerful name it is. And nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah nothing Jesus. but that name this morning. Would you give him a praise? Amen. Hallelujah. Give him a praise this morning. Hallelujah. Because he's a mighty good God. Amen. Amen. I love you this moment. I want to say this. You got wild Friday night with wildcats and you don't get wild with Jesus. You sinning. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. He's a good God this morning. Amen. Would you give the Lord a shout of praise this morning? Hallelujah. It's 
good to have Robin back to singing. She, her throat's been really messed up. So good to hear her this morning. Give her and the Lord a good hand this morning. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. We welcome you to Solid Rock this morning. Glad that you're with us. Believe in God for great and mighty things. Amen. Good to see Sister Helen back there now for a while. Amen. It's good to have her back in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Give the Lord another praise in this house, would you? Amen. Amen. Brother Jason's getting ready to come and receive our tithes and our offerings this morning. Amen. I thank you for your faithfulness, your giving. Amen. It goes to the work of the Lord. Amen. It reaches out. We've got several outreaches. Amen. That this funds. Amen. So just let the Lord richly bless you this morning. Amen. Brother Jason. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. And it's good to know Jesus as our Savior. Amen. And Robin sings a song. It's called I Held On. And you know, that's the way it is in your finances or anything in your spiritual walk. You know, God God said he would bless. He told Abraham, he said, Abraham, I promise I will bless you. And multiply, and I will multiply them. Sometimes, you know, it don't seem like the promise is going to come to pass. But, you know, we just, we just hold on anyway. And, and God always makes a way. Amen. So, uh, as I get ready to receive the tithes and offerings this morning, I wanted to read a couple of scriptures here. Uh, I'll, I'll go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. I've, I've read this before because it's so easy to forget where our blessings came from. It's so easy to forget how God is the one that provides and not our jobs and not our bank accounts, not our checks that we get. Amen. It's God that makes a way. It's God who gave it, gave it to us. Uh, it's God's decision whether we wake up tomorrow or not. Amen. It's God's decision. Uh, so the giving of our tithes and offerings is just a way to ensure, say, Lord, I trust you. I trust you by, by giving a, a tenth of what you give me, which is nothing, Lord. You, you give me a whole 90 and all you're asking is for 10. What a God. What a loving Father we have. Amen. It said in, in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse uh, 14, it says, When thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget thy Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt. Amen. Out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. How many has God brought out of the house of bondage? Amen. He is blessed. Oh, how many times he's brought us out of hardships. So many times when we didn't think, hallelujah, that we would be able to, to, to pay a bill. Or, or so many times we didn't know how we was going to do this. But God always, always made a way. It said, who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness where there were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought and there was no water. There was no water. Man, I've been there. Who brought thee forth water out of rock of Lent. God will make a way despite whatever's going on in your financial crisis. I promise you. He, I don't have to promise you. He said, I promise if you'll just hold on, I will make a way. Oh, hallelujah. I remember in on a hush, but I remember in the Bible he talks about Elijah. Elijah, I'll, I'll, I'll have the ravens to feed you if I have to. Oh, <laughs> I'll do whatever I got to do. Just trust me. Uh, the Bible says that he would open the winds of heaven. Amen. That he would pour out a blessing that we wouldn't have room enough to receive it. Amen. If the offering takers would get ready to come and start heading this way. And it goes on down here in verse 17. It's talking about all this stuff that I, I, I just mentioned. Amen. And it says, And thou say in thy heart, My power and my might had gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord God, for it is he that giveth thee power. It is he that blessed you. Amen. It was he that giveth you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant. Amen. I just encourage you. Thank you for being faithful to your to your giving. Thank you for being faithful to your ministry. Let's 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 reach your hands this way. Let's ask the Lord's blessing upon the offering this morning. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Father, we thank you for all the mercies. Father, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for the blessing, Father. No matter the shape my finances in, God, I know, hallelujah, that I'm giving in faith this morning, Lord, and knowing, hallelujah, that you see the sacrifices, Lord, that you see every need, that you're a God of turn around. We thank you, Jesus. We ask you to bless and multiply this just as you did the fish in the loaves. We praise you, Jesus. Amen. Before I sing this song this morning, I, I want to thank Diane uh, when she comes in to see Helen and she has that desire to, to come to church. And uh, Brenda loves this song and 
Helen loves this song, and I'm sure Diane does too. So I'm singing it for Helen this morning. for you, not an excuse. Amen. He's a good God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may go to your Sunday school very quietly, very reverently this morning. When I lay my eyes with the broken heart Not being a 
interested in anything but you. A lady came to me one time. She said, I'll give God my house. She said, God, I'll give God my car. And I looked and I said, Nancy, God's not interested in your car. He's not interested in your house. He wants you. You can give God everything but what he need, wants. won't help you any. How many believe that? He's a mighty good God this morning. Amen. So good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you for being with us this morning. Amen. If you'll go with me to the book of St. John's Gospel, chapter number 18. It's so good to have Jennifer. Amen. She's in from North Carolina, and she's, amen. Her family, hers, my, she's my daughter too. Amen. He's a mighty good God. I know mean, he's a good God. Amen. Told Heather today she must be she must be ancient because I she's been around all my life and I got to thinking all these kids that have grown up I've got to be ancient. Somebody shout hallelujah! God's a good God this morning. Appreciate the mercies of Him and all that He is to us this morning. Saint John's Gospel chapter eighteen, the scriptures this morning that I want to share something that the Lord shared with me and um, this as we're going into the Easter season and. Uh, I try not to celebrate just one day, amen. He's a resurrected Savior every day. But uh, uh, w- as we go into this, this was Jesus before Pilate there. They had, they had condemned him to die. Um, Pilate was going to have to pass sentence. Pilate didn't want to. Pilate had a wife said, don't have nothing to do with this innocent man. And anyhow, but see, there comes a time in your life you have to make a decision. And your decision will will determine your destiny. Amen. And every one of you are not every one of you that are sitting here this morning have made decisions, and now you have consequences, good or bad, from those decisions. And life is always going to be full of decisions. Amen. Life's always going to have, amen. And and let me say this. There can even be people that makes bad decisions and affects you. Amen. You have nothing to do with it, and yet those decisions they make can affect you. How many believes that this morning? I got a little quiet, but it's still the truth. Amen. Decisions that you your husband makes will affect you if you, you, you you're the family or in that family. Your children can make bad decisions, it will affect you. They make good decisions, it will affect you. Can I get a witness in this house? But Pilate had a decision that he had to make. And he had to make the decision either to let Jesus go and be called a friend of Caesar, or he had to stand up for Jesus and risk his reputation, his his way of life. And Pilate went the way of the flesh, and he said, let Jesus be crucified. Amen. Amen. History tells us, amen, sometime after that, that Pilate lost his mind trying to deal with condemning an innocent man. Amen. But he was more than a man. He was Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the God in the flesh. Can I get a witness in the house? Yeah. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Amen. But before all of this happened, Amen. Pilate was examining Jesus. He was, amen, looking, amen, trying to find maybe a way for something. And, uh, amen, the Bible says this. I, I may back up a verse there. I don't know. Amen. How many knows that God's a good God? Amen. Hallelujah. If you go back up to about verse number, amen, verse 32. Let's go back to verse 32, okay? Amen. And that is the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake signifying what death he should die. Now listen to this. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, saith, Thou this thing of thyself, thyself, Jesus answered him, saith thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it of uh, Tell it thee of me. Now, what Jesus was saying here was, he asked Pilate, did you hear somebody else say that, or are you saying that I am the king of the Jews? And Pilate, (laughs) 
Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thy own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from hence. Somebody shout amen. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou saith that I am a king. To this end I was born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everybody shout the truth. Amen. Jesus came to bear witness to this. Everyone that is of truth heareth my voice. Now remember, that's very important. If you got truth, you're going to hear the voice of God. Amen. Pilate said unto him, what is truth? And I would just like to stop there for a minute and ask you the same question. Amen. What is truth? Now, I told you a couple Sundays ago as I taught three or four Sundays ago. Amen. The Bible said that every man did that which was right in his own eyes because there was no king. Now, amen, we've got a lot of people, a lot of things out here today that we call truth, but what is truth? Amen. What is going to get you to heaven? Is it my truth? Is it your truth? Is it the way you think truth is? Or is there a truth? Is there a guidance of truth that we need to go by? Somebody shout amen. Now, amen. Now, I- I'm sure that most of the time it, it, when spouses have an argument, each spouse feels like that they're the one that's right. But we know who's right. We do know who's right, don't we, Brother Buddy? Somebody, Don't we, Brother Sean? Now, Brother Calvin can smile about this because he's always right. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. Pretty well always. Somebody shout amen. He's not married. But God's still a good God. Somebody shout amen. So when I look at this, I want to ask you a question this morning. And see, everybody to a point is in a in a journey or a, a, a conquest. Amen. To find out truth. They want truth because truth does something for you that nothing else will. Now, how many of y'all in here has ever told some? or let me rephrase this. How many in here that somebody has told you a lie and caused you some problems with that? Because a lie is the truth most time twisted, and it takes another angle except what it was meant to be. Amen. Satan said to Eve and Adam, amen, you shall not surely die, but you'll become like God. Now, to a point, they didn't die. They didn't fall over and drop dead that instant, but they did die. Somebody shout amen. And they did die. Not a natural death at that moment, but a spiritual death. If God says something, he's right. How many believes that? God is always right. Amen. I heard a person tell me one time, I don't care what God says. I know what's right. Now, I'm thinking you already deceived and don't understand it because you can become under a false spirit. Amen. I had, had a family a while back uh, talking to me, and they was talking about some things, and, and, and they had no discernment. And they said, I feel like this is God. I said, you, what are you basing it on? Well, I have prayed. Now, I believe when you make major decisions, you need to do more than just pray. You need to seek God for his will and that your heart is right, that you want the will of God and not your will. Well, I prayed about this. Now, this may be contrary to some of y'all's beliefs. I prayed about it, and I felt good. Well, I have prayed about a lot of things. I like to pray about a new Cadillac and feel good about it. Come on, somebody. That was, uh, that was on the news. This guy was telling me the other day, this just happened a while back. I don't know what, how long it's been. But this money truck was taking a little over a million dollars to this certain bank. And it was enough of it that they put it in a little cart, like a toolbox that had wheels on it. And somehow, by some kind of an accident, those back doors came open and that toolbox with wheels went down the road. It wasn't Brother Buddy because he had told me about it if it was. 
But this truck driver came along and seen this toolbox on the side of the road. And he had been wanting a toolbox like that. He stops and realizes it fell off of somebody's truck. But he didn't know what in the contents inside was. And finally he, he fooled around and he got that toolbox open because he thought there was tools in it. And there was over a million dollars in that tool or in that box that looked like a toolbox. Somebody shout amen. Now, when that happened, he realized somebody had lost this. And he called the police, and it wasn't but a few minutes, amen, that the, 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 the truck stop where he had pulled in at, amen, was full of cops and federal, federal people and all this. Now, you think about this. Amen, and, and finally they, they located and realized what had happened and all this kind of stuff had been reported that this money had been missing and amen, when the, the, the truck had got to the bank and they didn't know where they lost it at and all this. And uh, the truck driver that picked it up and saved it, he said this. He told the people, he told the company that had lost the money. I'd been, the only reason I stopped there was because I'd been wanting a toolbox like that. And do you realize that he saved this company a million and some dollars. And they bought him a $129 toolbox. I believe I'd give that guy just a couple more dollars than that. Somebody shout amen. Now what all to say that to say this. Sometimes people don't realize how valuable the truth is. Now, I don't know what that man, I'm sure he couldn't have spent that money because it was marked. He probably had a serial number. They could have traced it somewhere and got him. But that man was truthful enough that he wanted to return what didn't belong to him. Now, some things don't belong to us. Am I preaching to you all this morning? And Pilate felt like that he was a very powerful man that he sat there on that throne and he judged Jesus to the point to say, you tell me what truth is. Amen. I, I, I'm a very educated man. I'm a very powerful man. I'm all of this and I'm all of this, but amen, I still don't know what truth is. Can you tell me what truth is? Somebody shout amen. How many of y'all this morning needs the truth? Amen. How many knows who the truth is? Jesus said, I am. St. John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Somebody shout amen. There is no truth outside of the word of God. Amen. Man takes truth uh, and he adds to it or takes away from it, but God is true. And what God said is truth this morning. Can I get a witness in this house? Tell your neighbor, I need truth this morning. Because we are living in an hour of great deception. Amen. I know a family, a, a, a family, they go to a wonderful church. They've got a wonderful pastor. Amen. A, 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 he's just a great guy. There's a, he's a, there's a great church. But they want to leave that church. But they don't want to leave it just to leave and go. They're looking for something, for somebody to make them mad or to go against what they want to do. To leave that church. And then when they leave that church, because something will happen, because they're looking for something. Well, I'm preaching good to y'all this morning. And when they when they leave that church, they're going to tell, well, Sean Ashley didn't do this or that. Or the preacher did this or that. That is not the truth. Somebody shout amen. That is an excuse to cover up the real reason why they're going to leave. Can I preach to y'all a while this morning? Amen. And when that happens, and then they'll follow, I feel led to go over yonder to that singing church. Somebody shout amen. Or I feel led for this. Amen. And, and, and they don't even know God, church. Somebody shout amen. If you don't know what truth really is, how can you make the decision to go around the right road? I'm preaching real good to y'all this morning. So I want to know what truth is. And Pilate was wanting the truth, but he was wanting it in a way that would benefit him. But the truth, amen, amen, may not always just benefit you, but it will make you free. Because who the Son set free is free indeed this morning. How many of y'all can remember when you was a child 
and you uh, maybe told your mama, dad a lie, amen, and then you just you couldn't live with yourself, and you went and you told the truth, and it got you in trouble, but you felt so good because you told the truth. <laughs> Y'all want truth here this morning? See, I want something that's real. And, and I begin to study it. What is the definition of truth? God, what is something that, that I can really bring out? And I know we've got facts. I know we've, you know, I know we've got the, the fundamental truths, you know, that amen, the sun's gonna shine tomorrow, or, or amen, the amen, tomorrow is Monday, amen. But God, what is real truth? What is something, God, that can that I can build on that my life as I preached even on the radio this morning? My life, amen. I've got to have something that's steadfast in the storms of life. How many of y'all have been in storms of life lately? How many have been, amen, in a situation that you didn't know how to live to a point? I want to know how to live this morning. And the only way to live is to live by this gospel this morning. Oh, hallelujah. In this book, oh, God, in this book contains the pages of life and truth and godliness this morning. Amen. Now, my flesh don't always like to obey this. It says don't do some things in here. Somebody shout amen. And see, any time that God begins to move for you, the devil's going to do everything he can to stop it and stop it. How many, how many got y'all with me on that this morning? So here's the thing that I'm trying to get to you this morning is, amen, I want to buy that truth. Amen. Go to book of Proverbs, Heather. Amen. Book of Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 23 this morning. Somebody give God one more shout of praise in this house. Hallelujah. How many of y'all want truth this morning? I've had people to tell me, and they're sincere, and I love them when they do it. Brother Wayne, you tell me the truth. If you don't, don't, don't sugarcoat it, just tell me. I had somebody come to me one time, they said, you think I'm doing right what I'm doing? I said, no. You asked me to tell you the truth. But I said, well, all you've got to do is sit, sit and think about what you're going to do and see what's going to happen down the road from your decision. Now, if I base my decision on the moment to get myself out of the situation I'm in, it may not be right. I've got to know what's going to cost me down the road. Somebody shout amen. So when I look at this truth, I want to understand something. The Bible said in the book of Proverbs 23 and 23, buy the truth. Buy the truth. It's going to cost you something for the truth in this hour. We're living in a, in a world full of deception today. And when you turn the radio on or the TV on and you listen to that news, you don't know how much of it's true. Can I get a witness in here? It's the philosophy. It, it, it's the ideology of, a, 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 of ever what they believe, if, if they're liberalism or, or ever what. And they take that truth and they convert it into how they see truth. They believe that, amen, they believe, amen, that, that, that our president today, amen, is, is, a, uh, is a spy for Russia. Amen, do you believe that? You've got to know what's right. And somebody may have him as a God. I don't know. He's neither of those things. But he's a man that I am required to pray for and to hold up in prayer because he's leading this nation. Amen. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. And I believe this, and I'll stake this on it. Amen. Not bringing politics in, but I'm telling you, I believe that God put that man in that position, and when God puts a man in position, we're supposed to pray. It ain't about a Democrat. It's not about a Republican. It's not about an independent. It's about who God raises up and places in authority. Amen. Give God a shout of praise on that one. Hallelujah. Now, what is truth? Everybody shout, what is truth? And then the Bible said, by the truth. And what? How can you sell the truth? Now think about that. How can you sell the truth? You can sell it. You can sell it. You say you'll get rich off of it, and you can do that too. But I'm going to tell you something. You can sell out what God says to believe what somebody else says. Now, amen, it's why in the God's world would you want to put yourself in the place of God in your life, that you make the decisions based on what you think is the best. 
Am I preaching to y'all this morning? Now, listen, I love excuses. If I can get an excuse good enough, I can get out of what I'm in. But that ain't going to fix me. Then I'm going to have to find a bigger excuse. Then a bigger excuse. And a bigger reason. Somebody shout amen. So the Bible says to what? Come on, talk to me. Buy the truth and sell it not. Now, the truth is what God says. Hey, can I get a witness in here? I've had good people when I was at Rowena. I had good people that come to me and encourage me. Boy, you need to move. You need to get out of here. You don't need to be down here in this place. Amen. And I would look at them and I'd say, I've even had people want to prophesy to me that it was time to go. But I'd never heard nothing else from God about it. And I never will forget when I first went to Rowena Church. Uh, I was praying one day. Amen. It was a beautiful afternoon. And I was down there at church. Uh, amen. Down at Rowena. And I heard God speak to me. I sent you here. And now the next thing he was was, I will not leave you here. I knew there would be a day that I would leave Rowena Church. Amen. I didn't know how, what, how God was going to do it, but I know it would be a day I would leave that church down there. For 33 years plus, I was there. I had great men of God that encouraged me to leave from down there. Go over yonder and do this. Go over yonder and build over yonder. Do this down yonder. And they all meant well, but it wasn't right. Y'all listen to me? Because somebody tells you something, you need to make sure it's lining with the word. Huh? You know, if God placed you, listen, I had a preacher. One day, told some other preacher friend, he said, I was standing in my pulpit, and he said, a lady walked in the church, and he said, the Lord spoke to me that that's my next wife. Now, I will tell you something. The Lord didn't tell him that. And if the Lord did tell him that, he misunderstood what the Lord was telling him. If the Lord did tell him that, the Lord said, you need to be careful. But he's got a wife, he's married, and yet he said the Lord told him that that's his next wife. Now, folks, something ain't lining up. Now, I've got some of y'all squirming. Some of y'all don't want to listen to me, but it's still the truth anyhow. Somebody shout, it's still the truth anyhow. Amen. And you know what that man did? He left his wife, divorced her, went and married that other lady. He did. Tore that church apart. He quit preaching for a while. Can I get a witness in that? Not that God couldn't forgive him, but he listened to a wrong voice. People today are listening to voices that's not God. You better buy the truth. You better hear the word of God. You better listen as a man of God. Amen. Praying your Bible. Look at that scripture. Understand, God, I got to have truth. I can't believe a lie and be damned. Amen. That prodigal son believed a lie. He believed the pleasures was outside over yonder somewhere. Down that big city where I've never been. Man, they did there. Hey Amen. Maybe travelers passed by his house. Maybe he had friends that went down to the big city. And they said, oh, man, you can't believe Saturday nights. You can't believe at the women down there. You can't believe at the booze that flows. You can't believe at the good time we have. We get out of our minds. But listen, one day he went down there, but he found out it wasn't what he thought it was. Folks, it ain't never what you think it is. And we've all been tempted. But I want you to know, uh, you better get a hold of the truth. You better not sell it. Uh, you better hold on to it. Somebody shout amen. So what is truth? Don't sell it. And instructions. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Get some discernment. Folks, we need to discern what is God. I had a friend of mine, preacher friend, wanted to have a tent revival over in the Eli area. Really felt to go over there. Listen to me. Listen to this. Felt like over there. He wasn't a pastor. 
he just, he, I mean, he uh, uh, just preached. And he went over and helped me. He, he knew people in that area. I didn't know. He helped get me a lot. He helped me to get that done. And on Friday night, we started meeting. He didn't show up. Man, he was all excited. And I called him the next day, and I say, brother, I said, something wrong? Was you sick? Did something happen? No. No. And I know he's, he, he was different to me. No. I just uh, went down the road a half a mile and started a revival. He said something I've been wanting to do for a while. I said, what it was, he got jealous because some people were going to come to that tent revival and he didn't want them to come. And he went down the road and started a revival. Same night and closed the same night. Now, not that God can't work here and right across the road. I'm not saying God can't do that. But God is not in confusion. God is not in things that causes that kind of problem. And there was people that wanted to come to our revival in the tent that had not been in the tent. And yet they felt compelled to please him. Well, that went over real good. But anything that causes confusion, you've got to remember God ain't in it. Because God is not the author of confusion. I had a young man one time working with me. I had, used to have a lot of revivals. He was working with me. And uh, he got where he wanted to start having a lot of revivals. And I said, that's fine. Then he wanted to start inviting all the my musicians. All. I said, you can't do that. I said, I got to have him if I'm in revival. Next thing I know, he, he, he was try, trying to cause confusion. He was trying to go there behind my back and spread gossip. See, anytime somebody back, back bites behind you, you can't trust them. If they'll talk about me to you like a dog, they'll talk about you to me like a dog. And how we get this word backbiting is the word, amen, how that, how, how that they would turn animals loose up on you while your back was turned to devour you. It was also another way that they would bait traps for animals to come and to eat of that bait. And while they were eating of that bait, they would sneak up behind them and kill them. So when you talk about somebody to damage your reputation, I'm preaching the truth now. When you talk about somebody, well, they're not the only pig in the pen. Be careful what you say. Well, glory. So here is the thing that you and I need to listen to and understand this morning, amen, is when you backbite, when you say something about people behind their back as a slurful remark to cut them down, you are one that they say that this was developed in the Jewish history. It's like when you talk about somebody behind their back in an evil way, it's like eating your own dead brother's flesh. How many of y'all would take a, your natural brother or sister and, and them dead and cannibalize? You wouldn't do that, would you? When you do a brother or sister like that in the Lord, you're doing that very same thing. That's good preaching, Brother Wayne. I'm going to teach you on that before long. I, I got that lined up, so I'll just keep that for right now. Everybody shout, buy truth and sell it not. Get some wisdom. Get some discernment. Get some discernment. What is this going to cost me if I do this? What am I? What's the de How's the devil going to take advantage of what I do? I'm teaching you this morning something that we all need, and the church needs discernment because most people don't know what God is and what God ain't. If you can holler and shout, it's God. Holler and shout and ain't God. The devil can holler and shout, but when you got the Spirit of God to discern what's truth and what's right and what's wrong, Amen. 
I don't listen to everything. I don't believe everything. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. We need some understanding. How many believes that? And without understanding, the Bible says, my people perish. You will lose. Amen. If you don't get some understanding. If Brother, Brother Calvin is my professor, amen, he's teaching me certain formulas or he's teaching me a, a certain a lesson. And if I don't understand that, I don't care how smart he is, I'm going to fail it. You're going to fail it if you don't get some understanding. Because we live in an hour of deception right now. We live in an hour that everybody calls this God, that God, and everything else God, and most of it ain't God. Can I get a witness? Do you realize today, amen, they was talking the other day about a, a, a certain denominational church, and within a three-block area, I think they had 12 or 13 churches in a three-block area. Here's a church on, every, on all four corners just about. And somebody said, amen, and every one of them didn't have over 10 or 12 people in them. I said, how come they're all there like that? He said, they kept splitting because they couldn't get along with anything. You heard about them on the island. They got marooned. He had a shipwreck and got marooned on the island. He realized he wasn't going to get no help. He wasn't nobody coming, and he built him a little house. Then he, he, man, he was a spiritual man, he said, so he built him a church. So he'd go to church every Sunday. Wasn't long, there was another building, another building, another building. Finally, one day, his hut caught a fire, and they seen the smoke signal, and they rescued him. The rescuers looked at him and said, are you marooned by yourself? He said, I'm the only one on this island. He said, they asked him, said what's that building? He said, that's church. He said, what's that building? They said, church. He said, why you got two churches and only one person on the island? He said, I used to go to that and over there. He couldn't get along with himself. Can I get a witness in the house? Now, when you're the only one, you can't go to church for yourself. You're in trouble. Can I get a witness? Come on, give God one more shout of praise this morning. Amen. Now, I'm going to give you another definition, amen, of truth this morning. Truth is being loyal to the facts, uh, amen. Truth is dependable. Uh, you can count on truth uh, in the storm, amen. I'll tell you another little story, amen. It's, it's called the, 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 the storm, amen. That's the name of it, amen. And, and, and this, uh, hey, this mariner, amen, uh, amen, as people told him, said, amen, the, stor the, the, the storm is on, said, you better go check your boat. Uh, he said, the storm is on, said, you better see what's going on. Uh, he said, I don't have to worry about it. Before the storm came, uh, I tied everything down. Uh, I anchored everything down. Uh, everything's going to be all right because I prepared before the storm came. Tell your neighbor that's the truth this morning. Now, let's look at truth this morning. Pilate said, what is truth? Buy it, get wisdom, get instructions, and get some understanding. We need that this morning. Now, listen, folks. I like to jump. I like to holler. I like to shout. You know I'm all of those things. I'm an emotional type preacher. But my emotions is not my salvation. And my emotions is not what I base my salvation on. Because there's time I'm not jumping. But i got to have the truth to lead me. You need the truth this morning. Because if you don't, you get out there. After a while, you don't know what's right and what's wrong. Do you know this morning what's, right, what's really right and what's wrong? I told some people a while back. They got ill at me. I said, listen, you're having home troubles. I said, you need to be a husband. You need to be a wife. Now, every one of us, I've got one. I said, listen, there's a place for grandkids. And there's a place for grandkids to go home. The yell might not like that, but it's still true. I said, you didn't take no vow to grandkids. A vow to that husband to be. <laughs> Let me pull my coat off. It gets hot in here. Still true. You got an obligation to a husband or to your spouse. And that's the truth. And if you got them seven days a week, 24 hours a day under your roof, you better treat that husband or wife still got a problem. Give them 
just a little bit of sugar, you need to change. Because you're giving place to the devil to destroy your marriage. And he will take advantage of that. I know a lady, she came to church. Her and her husband having little problems. And she started putting her whole life into her children. And I said, listen to me. I said, I want to tell you something, sis. I said, one day, them kids, you're spoiling. And you're giving your whole life to them and won't work on your marriage. I said, they're going to find them a little gal, a little boy. And I said, they're going to leave you. Oh, they won't leave me. I'm mama. I said, you mark it down. Guess what them youngins did? And they left her. She didn't, she didn't take my, she didn't listen to me. And today, she lives in a little one-room apartment all by herself and nobody there except her and her pity party because she wouldn't listen. Well, God's good. And when I give instructions, I try to live them. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. What is truth? Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. God's a good God. Somebody shout he's a good God this morning. Amen. I can preach to you tonight, but I want to just teach to you this morning. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be a what? Rightly. Now, if you do not take my message this morning and rightly divide it, you'll be offended at me. Or you can take my message and go the wrong way with it. Come on, somebody. See, you got to, and, and only a, a mature Christian can really divide. Listen, you need to learn how to divide this truth. Amen. There's a time for all things. Now, here's the thing. I, I love the Lord. How many of y'all believe I love the Lord? How many of y'all, how many of y'all know I love the Lord? I mean, you, you, you really believe that with all my heart. I have a zeal. Since last Sunday, since last Sunday, I've done preached eight times. I got a zeal. I preach hard. I wire myself out. I go. I go. I've done preached eight times. If I preach, might be nine times in a week. Now watch this. I got a zeal for God. I got a zeal to see lost people get saved. God, that, that burns in my heart. I want to see you have a relation with the Lord that I can look at you and know that you're in love with the Lord. Knowing that's your best interest. See that you've got a heart for church, to worship God, and to build the kingdom of God. Have a heart for that. I've got a zeal for that. But if I've got this zeal and I've got no knowledge, I'll burn myself out Get discouraged and quit serving God. I can't save everybody. I can't reach everybody. I want to. Now, somebody said, well, that gets me off the hook. Hang on. There's another side of the story. I don't care if you go to church. I don't care if you die and go to hell. I don't care. Hey, I, I'm saved. I'm getting saved. But there's another attitude. Neither one of them's right. Neither one of them w w will bring results. I care about you. But if God don't visit your heart, I'm just using this example. If God don't visit your heart, you're lost. If God don't come by and waken you to realize you need to repent, you'll never pray. You better thank God if you've had a visitation of God, that God's come by your way and stirred your heart before. Can I get a witness? Because no man can come to the Father except the Spirit draw him. One day you got under conviction. The Spirit of God drawed you. It was up to you to respond to that. Can I get a witness? Every one of us has got a certain amount. I run. I, I go. I preach. I preach. I've got revivals lined up. I, I've got a church that I pastor, and I, this church never leaves my responsibility. Do you understand what I'm saying? But at the same time, I've got to rightly divide the word of truth, and I can only do so much. One soweth, one wateth, but God gives the increase. 
Now, if you come to church, see, I got a purpose for coming to church. I come to worship as a with a body of believers. Amen. I come together together in his name that I testify to the world. I love God and I've got a testimony. Amen. That I've been born again by the grace of God and I love going to church. Anybody love going to church? Amen. There's something about gathering together in a corporate body that changes everything. I feel a healing in here this morning. I feel deliverance. I feel the power of God in here this morning. Amen. Somebody shout rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. Now, some people don't understand that. Amen. Some people might not understand that. Amen. But listen, amen. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. God has to be involved in what you do. And if God's not involved in it, when I, when I used to set the tent up, I would try to pray, God, give me the right tent lot. I always prayed that. Let me tell you something. Many years ago, this was a beautiful tent lot that I wanted. Oh, I wanted this tent lot bad. It was well manicured. I didn't have to go in and try to mow grass this high. That's Michael Dow. That's, brother, that's the guys when you had to go clean a lot off, and, and it hadn't been cleaned off for years, and it was rough. and Man, it was hard, difficult. You had to work weeks to even get the tent lot in condition to even have a tent revival. This tent lot was, was done manicured. It doesn't have electricity. We're gonna call, I'm going to have to go set up electric poles. We're not going to have to get it inspected. We're not going to have to get Listen, I've, I, I've had my poles to get inspected before, starting on Friday night. And they didn't get there until Friday day, and they, they denied it. I was in Whitley, or in, uh, uh, where's down there on the past Whitley City? Oh, nine of Tennessee. Amen. And they called me at 11 o'clock that day and said, your pole has failed instru- or, uh, inspection. The ground wire, something, one of the ground wires went right. I had to get in my car and run all the way to Old Night of Tennessee. Amen. And try to get that fixed and then get it inspected by 4 o'clock that evening and get back home. Amen. And get ready and run back to Old Night of Tennessee. That's just, that's just one little incident. Never will forget. I set, a, I set my tent up one time next to some big old trees. And they had ants out there on that in trees. I, I don't know what them things was. They looked like monsters. I'm not talking about that little ant you got to go try to find somewhere. I'm talking about ants. You remember? Can you remember? They was eating big old trees up. I'm talking about monster ants. Well, I didn't want them things getting that tent and all that. So I get, I mix me up Friday afternoon. Man, I mix, I, I, got, I, got, I got three or four different kinds, just a little bits of each. I got three or four different kinds of uh, 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 bug sprays. And man, I mix them all together. I put them in that sprayer. Don't ever do that. Please, dear God, don't do that. I mixed all that together. Oh, God, and I sprayed that stuff. And you know, amen. All of a sudden, my. Oh, God. It felt like you was poking my eyes out. It felt like my head was going to blow off. Amen. And, I, and I, I, I leave Columbia and go back home, try to get ready. Amen. I'm thinking, God, help my headache. And I get to church, and my head is literally coming off of my shoulder. I can't hardly, I, every time something makes a sound, and I've got to preach. I've got to get out there and lay down and, and preach this thing. Oh, God. You talking about some difficult times. There's been some difficult times. Somebody shout amen. But anyhow. I'm making a long story short here. This lot's pretty. It's manicured. I want this lot. Man, this lot's going to be pretty. It's between Somerset and Monticello. It'll help the folk in Somerset to come, help the folk in Monticello. We'll just be a short walk. Boy, I went over and I got that lot. Everything lined up about that lot. And I just, I said, Lord, I just feel that little feeling. Anybody ever feel that little feeling? And I said, Lord, I prayed that night, Brother Rick, I'm sorry. I said, Lord, if this ain't you, show me. And I dreamt that night there were snakes coming out of holes everywhere. I, I was fighting snakes. snakes. Honey, tent revival, no tent revival. I'm not going there. I can tell you that. I had like a backer stick in my hand. I was beating snakes over here, beating snakes over there, and I was just fighting snakes, snakes, snakes. There's all that lot. Didn't know nothing. Didn't know nothing. 
Johnny Troxel was alive, he went with me. And I called him, I said, Brother Ronnie, I said, we got to find another lot. And we turned back into Monticello, and I said, who owns that lot? He told me who it was. And I went and I got that lot. It was the perfect place. Now, going back to that lot, the former lot with all them snakes on it, the people that was going to help me in that tent revival, going to help me in it, they, they'd never helped me before, but they, they lived right across the road. And they was going to help me in this tent revival. And, oh, man, they had music, they had this, they had that. They were going to be a blessing, I thought. Him and his wife, an understatement is saying getting along. They was at each other's throats. They was fussing and fighting about things I didn't know a thing about. He's seeing another woman, and she, right when this tip revival had been going on, he's seeing another woman, and even got her expecting. She's throwing the kids out, puts him in jail. Could you imagine me sitting on that tent lot? And God's been good to me. If you'll listen, you'll know what's right and what's wrong. If I'd have went that way, I'd have been in trouble. That I'd have had to take that tent down and went home. Then they got other people involved in this fight. Somebody shout amen. And you never seen such a mess in all of your life. I want the truth. I want to know the truth. I don't want to pray if it feels good. Now, I'm going to tell you that tent lot looked good. It wasn't going to cost me nothing. No electric, no payments. The other lot I had to buy cost me about four days of a hard working to get it even in shape to have. Amen. It costed me about $400, amen, for to, to get the electric in there. It cost me about 200 and some dollars for Porta John that I wouldn't have had that other place. It costed me money, but it saved me more than I'll ever pay. You better know what's right, church. You better listen. You better buy the truth, and you better sell it not. You better stay with a man of God that knows what's right. Somebody shout amen. And if I don't know what's right, we'll pray about it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 3. Somebody give God another shout of praise in here this morning. Amen. Now listen, folks, everybody's not wrong and everybody's not bad. I'm just trying to tell you a few instances, uh, amen, that I've had, amen, that if I hadn't have prayed, I'd have been in a lot of trouble. Just because it looks good don't mean it's good. Oh, but I get the woolies every time I get around her. Well, you can get rid of them. There's a cure for them. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> I tell the guys that, I, I, come here, I'll use you. Uh, as the young men that I counsel before they get married, I said, I'm going to tell you something. I said, I want you, first of all, go, go, go look at her mama and watch her mama for about a week. So I said, you're marrying her mama to a point. Feel that cold wave coming through here just now? And I said, if she, if, I said, if she's as mean as a snake, that girl is mean too. Got that same meanness in her. In this, but I said, you see how she looks? She, 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 see her mama after about 40 years and three kids? She's a little bit on the. <laughs> if you marry looks, I didn't say a word. I didn't say nothing, did I? Well, you can't, con can't, can't condemn me. I didn't say nothing. I just. <laughs> my, f funny how y'all's minds go over places. 
I want you to see the picture of Michael Dow when I, when I married him and Leanne. He weighed 130 pounds. Don't ask him now. Don't, tell, don't even ask him how I mentioned it. Now, what you see now is not what you're going to get off of it. Is that still good preaching? Now, are you willing? When everything is, you can be seated because I don't think you're ready. Somebody shout hallelujah. Am I telling the truth? Amen. When Sister Jean married me, honey, I had that black hair. I had hair that come down to here. Had that mustache. Yep. I had muscles somewhere. Somebody shout amen. And I was cool. Come on, anybody been there? Huh? Yeah. I've been there. Amen. But if she had married me for that, what would she do now? Can I get a witness in the house? I'm trying to tell you something. i got to have truth. Do I love her when the things are wrong and when powers of hell are against? Amen. Do I still hold to that truth and say, it's still right regardless of how I feel? Good preaching, Brother Wayne. Now watch this. Go to verse 2. Go to verse 2. Let's go back up and read verse 1. So good. Know this. Now in the last days, what kind of times are going to come? Have you, anybody listen to the news lately they're talking about this 5G network? Folks, I'm going to tell you, this 5G network is capable of monitoring you 24, we already got there to a point. But all over this world, and they're putting the chips between the fingers already. That, amen, that you can, I can stand here today, here, and, 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 and put money in the bank in Russia with this chip in my hand. It's the greatest economical thing, thing they say since, since the sunshine was discovered. But it's leading all to one thing. You can't buy, sell, nor trade except you've got a name or a number. You better listen to me. I told a man this while back, you got to yell at me. Your money is not going to be worth the paper it's written on. And all, all these plans that people have got without God, it's going to be terrible. Know this also in the last days, perilous time, dangerous, so serious time shall come. They're coming, folks. They're here. For men shall be what? And listen, when I love myself more than I love anything else, I'll sell God out to get my way. Somebody shout amen. Had a young man come to me one time. Amen. He was very, he was very zealous. He loved the Lord. Amen. And he got word that he didn't think God was honoring him. And the devil came to him and said, if you will sell me your soul, I'll make you ever what you want to be. He said, all you got to do is sell me your soul. You can sell your soul, church. Men, of, men shall be what? Covetous. It's mine, 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 mine. Boasters. Proud. Now, amen. Let, let's don't talk about men. Let's talk about me. Let's talk about you for a moment. Let's, let's see which, how many of these is in our life. Am I preaching to you all now? Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, children, disobedient to un. Are we there? Are we there? Without natural affection. Let's go and talk about this in a minute. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of what? Next verse, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of what? Now, is anything wrong with the pleasure? Anything wrong? No, it's the lovers of more. When you love something more than you love God, it becomes an idol to you. Next verse, please. Having what? But what? From such turn away. Is that what it says? 
For of this sort are which are crept into houses, leading captive, silly women, laden with sins, lead away with divers' love. Somebody shout amen. Don't have time to go through that. Are ever learning and never able to come to what? It's always just a, plun, a, a fun seeking pleasure seeking time. God's good. I said He's a mighty good God this morning. Amen. And I want to say, now watch this truth. I'm going to give you one more definition truth, consistent, not uncertain. I told my wife when we first got married, I said, it's going to be like this. We ain't always going to agree. I ain't always going to be right. You ain't always going to be right. But let's settle one thing. You can get mad at me. We can even have a disagreement. We can even have an argument. But some of y'all, we can have just a plain old fuss. said one thing about it. When the fuss is over, the argument's done, I still love you as much as I ever loved you. That don't change nothing. One thing's you be certain. I ain't packing my bags unless you pack yours and I'm going with you. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's what Brother Sexton did, doing it? Somebody shout amen. So here's the thing. Amen. There are some things you need to know. You're not going to leave me because we disagree. You're not going to get upset or you're not going to, well, I'll just leave. No, 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 no. You don't, you, don't, you don't do those. You don't do those things. I'm preaching real good to y'all right now. Give me a little marriage counsel while I'm in this. Amen. Now, I may have to go out and cool off, stick my head in a tub of water. But I'm going to come back in and hug and say, honey, I'm sorry. You're, you're right. You always are, little whore. Somebody shout amen. Not that you're always wrong, but she's always right. Somebody shout amen. Well, glory. You say, that ain't spiritual. Oh, yes, it is too. Because listen to me. Listen to this. Brother Buddy can tell you this. Sister Shirley's got both ears popped. Well, watch her look at me. It ain't even about Sister Shirley. A pastor asked me to come to his church on a Saturday day and preach a men's meeting. I wanted to go to that man's church and preach something big and jump over pews, you know, and Superman up, up, and away, you know. Man, just tell him like it was. Of course you do. It's a man's ego. I guarantee you one thing: if you if you'll go uh, if you'll go out, uh, uh, Sister Shirley, while he's mowing the yard, you go to the door and give him the thumbs up. He'll drive that lawn more like a race car. We run off of that sometimes. No, don't y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. You'll change them gears in front of her like you ain't never changed them. <laughs> You'll spin that wrench around. Come on, somebody. Almost done here, but it's still the truth. But God gave me a message, and I couldn't get away from it. I know it was God. Husbands, love your wives. And if a man and a wife is not getting along and the devil's working, your prayers can be hindered. Because you're not working it out between your spouses. <laughs> That's a word. And I went down there and preached that to them. And them men, every one of them must have been fighting with their wives. And the pastor, his wife was going through the change of life and some things. Didn't know none of this. And he was about to pull his hair out. He didn't have a lot. Thank you, brother. Now, he tells us this, don't he? He said, I'm about to go. She's about to drive me crazy. So what now? Cut and put most down. I don't know how you can do it wrong, but I guess you can. Somebody shout amen. And, it, and I preached that, well, 
Every one of these men took me at my word. They went to Kroger and Halgens and all these places and the floors. They bought candy. They bought flowers. They went home and hugged their wives and told them how much they loved them. And I got phone calls from women. Amen. Them wives said, what did you say about to my husband? What was the kind of message it was? Amen. They all wanted to know because they got such a change. Got the truth. And saved that church. Because the enemy was working to destroy that church through nothing but a husband and wife. No sins, no bad things, just arguing, fussing, and fighting. I'm preaching real good to somebody here this morning. Amen. And you know what? It changed that church by the grace of God. Amen. God knows how to do it. Can I get a witness in here? Ever learning and never able to come. So now it's almost done, almost done with this. Amen. But God's good. Go to, go, go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 1. Try verse 1. I charge thee before the before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at the appearing of his coming. Somebody shout amen. amen. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, rebuke, re, re, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers. What? Somebody shout amen. Watch this. And they shall turn. From the truth. See, you can turn from the truth. That's why it says buy it. Keep it. Hold it. Now, there's not a person here that's, that, that's perfect this morning, and I understand that, but I've got to get a hold of this truth and hold it this morning. Let me believe that. This is a church. Where would you be this morning if truth had not come your way? Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Listen, when you want to know what's right, Go to the book. When you want no direction, go to the book. And thank God for somebody that when your life is cold and indifferent, that somebody could come by and maybe throw a little spark and stir you back up again. Can I get a witness? That the Spirit of God will come by and stir your heart as they come to the music this morning. Amen. And visit your heart in a mighty way. Can I get a witness one more time in this house? How knows he's a mighty good God this morning? How knows he's a mighty good God? Folks, we need the truth this morning more than we need anything else in this world. We need the truth. Would you stand with me all over this building this morning? I've just talked to you. I've not really preached to you this morning. But we need the truth. How many knows we need the truth this morning? We need to know, listen, when you say something is God, you need to make sure it's God. Not just what works the best for you. Let me believe that this morning. He's a mighty good God. Amen. I want you this morning, if there's a lost person in this building, that you would come and say, Lord, I'm tired of chasing empty rainbows. I'm tired of living a life of sin. God, I need help this morning. Amen. This altar is open for you. And you that's utter saved this morning, how many of you got to continue this truth? And the truth will make you free. I know the truth will make you free this morning. Amen. Everything I've told you this morning is truth. Everything I've preached is out of this book is truth this morning. Amen. And listen, how many's heard the old the old the old people say, the truth will stand when the world's on fire? How many's ever heard that? Raise your hand if you've ever heard that. Well, that's not in the Bible, but it's right. It ba it basically backs that up. Because when the whole world is a falling apart, truth will stand. Truth is dependable this morning. Let me believe that. You can always count on the truth. Truth this morning, amen, is consistent. It's unchangeable this morning. Would you just lift your hands up all over this building? Say, God, I need that truth like I've never had it. God, I want to make it a lamp under my pink feet and a light under my path this morning. Come on, would you love him? Come on, would you love him this morning? talk to him this morning. Come on, would you talk to him this morning? This altar is open if you need him this morning. You can lock me up in a prison and throw away the key. The f- 
Don't 